Now, let us look into the calculation of the evaluation of the strength properties based on the strengths of the fiber and the matrix contribution of uh, the strength of fiber and the matrix to the composite. Now, for unidirectional fiber composites, we can apply rule of mixture to calculate the strength of the composite say here the stress or the modulus of this thing, um, st stress applied on the uh, stress applied on the fiber and the matrix component what will be the stress on the final composite say if we know the volume fraction of the fiber volume fraction of the matrix and the strength of the fiber and the strength of the matrix we can calculate the strength of the composite from this relation where sigma c is stress on composite sigma f is stress on filament or fiber sigma m stress on matrix and v f and v m are the volume fraction of the fiber and the matrix respectively. Now, there can be a critical volume fraction of the fiber, critical volume fraction of the fiber in the composite that can also be calculated from the these parameters, the uh, stress value on the matrix and fiber, uh, this critical volume fraction can be calculated. The modulus of elasticities of the composite also can be calculated. The modulus of elasticity of composite in terms of modulus of elasticity of matrix and that of fiber and the volume of a matrix and fiber can be expressed as E c is equal to E f into V f plus E m into V m and E c or E c is equal to E f into V f plus E m into 1 minus V f. Now, in case the fiber is in elastic deformation, elastic region, matrix in plastic deformation, the applicable equation would be this, where sigma by E is the slope of the stress strain, E is the strain, uh, is the slope of the stress strain relationship of the matrix at a given strain beyond the proportionality limit. So, these equations are the governing equations by which if we know the strength of the fiber, if we know the strength of the matrix, then we can have a preliminary calculation for one particular composite to be made from such fiber and matrix. So, for selection of one uh, fiber and matrix component, then we can utilize these equations for calculation of the uh, properties of the final composite. You can also calculate the Poisson's ratio, where this gamma refers to the Poisson's ratio and C, F, C, F and M, these subscripts refer to composite fiber and matrix respectively. And this shows the gamma C is the Poisson's ratio of the composite and uh, this is the Poisson's ratio of the fiber volume fraction of the fiber, Poisson ratio of the matrix, volume fraction of the matrix. The density can also be calculated from that of the component fibers and matrix along with uh, if we know the volume fraction of the fiber and matrix in the composite. Now, let us look into some properties of the composites on the fiber loading due to the fiber loading of the composites effect of fiber loading on the properties of the composite. Here are two different properties are shown heat deflection temperature and tensile strength and the matrix materials 
in the composites nylon 6, polyether ethyltone, polybutylene terephthalate, nylon 6, polypropylene acetal. This is crystalline uh, matrix polymers and polymers in the amorphous phase, amorphous state are polyether sulfone, polyphenylene oxide, polycarbonate, acrylonitrile butadiene styrene tar polymer. Now, after incorporation of 30 weight percent glass fiber in those matrix regions, it has been found there is an enhancement of heat deflection temperature by 150 degree Celsius temperature if nylon matrix 6, 6 was the matrix. In case of peak, it was 145 degree increment enhancement, whereas in, in case of polypropylene it is quite low, for acetal it is quite low. This is quite uh, expected because glass fiber, this is a polar material having um, oxide config, uh, uh, composition, oxide composition and nylon 6 polyethylethylone polybutylene terephthalate nylon 6 these are having such polar linkages so this polar polar interaction makes very good addition of this matrix resin with the glass fiber that's why there is enhancement of heat deflection temp that means heat deflection temperature means the composite uh, can stand without any dimensional instability up to these temperatures. If we look into the strength property, tensile strength expressed in mega Pascal, that enhancement is also quite high or in, uh, in the same sequence as it has been found in case of heat deflection temperature for these regions with this. 38 percent class fiber loading, 100 degree for nylon 6, 100 MPa for nylon 6, uh, nylon 6 and nylon 6 6, <coughs> whereas little less for the other polymers. So, it shows that these glass fiber can be a good pair for nylon 6 peak polybutylene diethylate. Now, these strengths could be further improved if we replace the glass fiber with carbon fiber or aramid fiber. That data is not available with me at the moment. So, only a representative uh, um, uh, reflection of properties are shown with this 38 percent glass fiber in those uh, crystalline and amorphous polymers. Effect of particulate and fibrous reinforcement on properties of nylon 6 is composites. Now, in this case, only one matrix polymer was chosen nylon 6 6 aliphatic polyamide, and when there is no fiber, no reinforcement, no filler, no fiber, tensile strength of that nylon 6 polymer is was 85, flexural strength was 2.5 to 3 giga Pascal, heat deflection temperature is 95 to 100 degree Celsius, stiffness, stiffness ratio is 1 only. Incorporating 50 percent fiber, uh, fibrous uh, particulate filler, particulate filler in this nylon 6 is composite, the tensile strength has been increased from 85 without filler to 95 mega Pascal. Flexural strength has been increased from 3 to uh, almost 6, heat deflection temperature 100 to 170 and stiffness ratio is also increased 
thirty five percent particulate and fifteen percent as a total uh, filler was fifty percent here total fifty percent was particle only here in this case here in this case a combination of particle and fiber thirty five percent particle and fifteen percent fiber. So, a combination of this particle and fiber you see enormous increase in strength from 95 to 125 mega Pascal with uh, little increase also in flexural strength and quite a good uh, change in uh, re remarkable change in heat deflection temperature from 170 to uh, 220 or 230 degree Celsius and stiffness ratio is also increased. And when 50 percent glass fiber was used, you see further improvement is there. So, it shows a combination of particle and fiber is good and if the fiber is very thin continuous fiber, then in that case also one can have very good mechanical properties uh, with such reinforcement. Properties of now this table shows properties of some fibers, metals and alloys and composites. Now you see look at the properties of S glass fiber specific gravity is the tensile strength tensile modulus specific strength means ratio of the strength to its specific gravity specific modulus ratio of the modulus to a specific gravity. So, if you compare these properties the specific gravity uh, is higher for this uh, glass boron fiber, carbon fiber is little less, high strength carbon fiber is further less, aramid fiber is further less low and aluminum alloy 2.77, titanium alloys uh, it is so higher specific gravity still is quite uh, very high, glass epoxy uh, this 2.08, high modulus carbon fiber 1.67, aramid fiber 1.38 and boron fiber epoxy 1.97. So, out of all these different kinds of fibers, you find this aramid fiber and carbon fiber are having the lowest, uh, um, lowest specific gravity. That means, that can provide lightweight composites. Now, if you compare their specific gravity and their tensile strength and modulus that way you can say uh, aramid fiber aramid fiber could be a good selection good selection because if you look into the specific strength and specific modulus specific strength and specific modulus is quite good for aramid um, aramid fiber 2.77 and 13.2 so from this table one can go for a selection of fiber for making a composite flexural strengths of some fiber reinforced composites here matrix resins were polypropylene nylon 66, polyethylene terephthalate, polyether uh, sulfone, polyether ether ketone and fibers were glass fibers and uh, peak with carbon fiber. So, without any fiber flexural strength for these polymers were in this range. 30, 80, 60, 90, 90 or 90, 30. So, it varies from 30 to 90. Now, when 30 percent short fiber of this glass or carbon were incorporated, you look at the improvement in strength from 30 to 85, 80 to 180, 60 to 140, 90 to 145, 90 to 150 and 90 to 250. So, you see the effect of carbon fiber and pick that is why this carbon fiber polyether ether ketone composites are one can say very strong composite or strongest composite those are used in aircraft or in spacecraft 
the stop and if if you see if somebody um, can uh, use higher amount of fiber you see the further increment in properties where with this peak and carbon fiber it is 1100 uh, mega Pascal mega Pascal and this flexual strength. So, uh, it indicates that these high performance polymer matrix with carbon fiber can be a very good pair for high performance composite. Now, let us look into the uh, applications of those composite materials. Being lightweight resistance to weathering and resistant to harsh chemicals and their ability to be easily processed and fabricated easily machined these composite materials find wide variety of applications and they can be inexpensive composites or cheaper composites those are necessary for bulk application. For bulk application a special type of composite can be expensive that can be afforded, but for bulk applications uh, the price of the cost of the composite should be as cheap as possible. Now, combinations of rigorous specifications low volume specific machining and fabrication specifications and comparable price to alternative materials and solutions allow more expensive specialized composites to be developed and utilized. Now, let us look into the field marine craft, marine vessels, marine vessels. Now, these row boats, sail boats, racing boats and motor craft to large sea going ships. These are the vessels which are made from composite materials. Now, most of the such most of such vessels are composed of fiberglass and fiberglass carbon combination composites, aromatic nylons and fiberglass aromatic nylon combinations are also used. Now, this would be lightweight, they should be hydrophobic, they should be strong, they should be durable in marine environment. So, keeping all these properties under consideration, such combinations can yield such type of vessels from this fiber reinforced composites. In outer space applications, now in outer space applications, the fuel consumption is a prime consideration, and in the such outer space application, large amount of fuel is required to propel spacecraft into outer space that require light composites for weight reduction. Now, if the weight is reduced, then only fuel consumption can be reduced. So, weight reduction is a prime consideration at the same time that should be thermally stable as well as very strong. In that case carbon fiber which can stand a temperature like say more than 2400 degree Celsius as well as the high strength performance of that fiber high aspect ratio of that carbon fiber or even carbon nanotubes today. These carbon nanotubes or even graphene's can also be used as reinforcement for such high performance composites for outer space applications, which can neither uh, uh, not only reduce the consumption of fuel by reducing the weight as well as that can increase the uh, temperature stability or thermal stability etcetera. Solid propellant tanks are also made of this fiberglass and glass carbon fiber. Cargo bay doors 
are sandwich composites of carbon epoxy honeycomb materials. This is a special type of design having small quantity of material, but provide rigid structure and very strong uh, uh, high strong uh, high strength uh, composite because of the honeycomb geometry. The composites are also used for the construction and mounting of mirrors, telescopes, solar panels and antenna reflectors. In the biometrial field, biometrial field today different types of biodegradable as well as inert composites are used as implants. Now, composite structures can approach the densities of the bone and skin and that offer necessary inertness, so that it becomes biologically uh, biocompatible, physiologically acceptable by the living system and having strength, adequate strength matching with the strength of bone for bone replacement, matching with the strength of skin for skin replacement with such composite material to act as body part substitutes. So, body part substitutes have been found or are being made from the artificial composites which are acceptable or being accepted by the physiological system without any adverse effects. Now, artificial legs can be fashioned with glass polyester composite as well as with filled polyurethane foam, which adds strength to the thin celled glass polyester cell. Artificial legs are also made from carbon epoxy composite materials. So, for orthotic uh, application, prosthetic and orthotic applications today, this polymer composites are good, very good uh, replacement, uh, uh, very good material for replacing metals, because this handicapped persons they have to bear that load of that artificial legs or artificial limbs, but if those are heavier then the person can feel tiredness in order to avoid such tiredness if such strong organs can be made from such composites from light composites then those are very much useful as orthotic and prosthetic um, articles <coughs> provided the cost of those composites are bearable by the person. So, the cost factor is also uh, should also be kept in mind. Now, carbon epoxy plates are now used in bone surgery, screws, nuts, bolts replacing the titanium plates. Now, there can be total hip replacement, hip joint replacement by from composites. Rejection of composite does not occur, but compatibility is a major factor, lack of biocompatibility arises from additive impurities means now those composites contain some chemical additives Com composite means that contains polymer fiber etc all these things that contains additives or that polymer uh, in the composite in the form of fiber or matrix can degrade to form some products now those products should not be toxic to the physiological environment or the additive which are present in the composite that should not leach out to the 
uh, physiological fluid, biological fluid or to the tissue system uh, causing any toxic effect to the, the tissue. That is why people are thinking of developing biodegradable, fully biodegradable composites, um, although they are very much strong as well as the products of biodegradations are non-toxic, non-hazardous and those products of biodegradation and additives from those composites are supposed to be uh, excreted by the normal excretory system of the body. Applications of now to give an one example for such artificial bone composites, people can make uh, take people can take synthetic hydroxyapatite half synthetic synthetic half hydroxyapatite prepared in the laboratory or commercial available in the market of proper particle size that can be used as reinforcement and some biodegradable polymer like chitosan or polylactic acid or PLA co glycolic acid acid ester um, or um, called um, natural animal proteins other animal proteins animal proteins can also be used as matrix material or collagen, this collagen, chitosan, PLA, PLA co glycolic acid other animal proteins as the matrix resin and have or some other inorganic inert inorganic oxides can also be used as reinforcement for making artificial bone. Now, this biodegradable matrix and half can replace the uh, can be used as artificial bone and which will be replaced by the native bone. What will happen uh, this if this composite is used to replace some broken part of a bone, then slowly these polymers will be degraded and that space will be occupied by native bone tissue. So, this is a kind of biodegradable artificial bone material. Now, in application of composites in spores, this carbon and carbon glass composites are being used to make advanced material say for fishing rods, bicycle frames, golf clubs, baseball bats, rackets, skis and ski poles, basketball back, backboards etcetera. This should be light and strong, this should be light and strong. So, keeping in mind ab ab about the uh, weight of the uh, of these uh, items, uh, this carbon fiber was selected as the reinforcing fiber. In automobiles, now racing car bodies as well as uh, regular automobiles, pa or well parts such as drive shafts and lip springs, antennas and bumpers in private cars and heavy trucks are made of composite materials. I al I already mentioned that green composites today are going to replace
these are biodegradable these are going to replace that non biodegradable composites. Now, today in most of the modern car available in our country uh, one can find some interior covering of the door and the roof etcetera with some composite that composite is made of this polypropylene uh, jute composite is a PP jute composite, PP jute composite with a thin with a thin skin of soft PVC. They make such composite they take a non oven PP jute PP non oven PP jute fabric over that they place this PVC skin and they apply pressure at elevated temperature say around 170 degree at which temp uh, 100, um, 150 to 160 degree at which temperature this PP melts and that covers this jute fiber and consolidates forming a very rigid composite and the surface is uh, covered with this PVC foam skin. So, uh, that gives a very good uh, aesthetic finish with different colors and texture that is available that is being manufactured in our country. One industry I have seen that is uh, they are manufacturing Bidla corporation. they have one auto trim division they are making such type of composites for application in automobile interiors. Now, in industry industrial storage vessels for different solids and solid and liquid chemicals pipes reaction vessels and pumps those are made of composites. They offer resistance to corrosion acids and bases oils and gases and salt solutions along with the necessary strength. In aerospace field the bodies of both the stealth fighter and bomber are mainly made of carbon composites. They are strong as well as light. Now, in Boeing aircraft, Boeing aircraft uses higher quantity of fiberglass composite it's around 20 square yards for Boeing 707 aircraft, 200 square yards for 747 aircraft and Boeing 6767 uses carbon aromatic nylon epoxy composite as landing gear door and wing to body fair rings. Uh, so, I can continue this discussion on this composites <coughs> for green composites <coughs> we have developed <coughs> composites from jute and 
soy resin. This jute fiber has the reinforcement in the form of oven and non oven fabric both and soy resin was made from <coughs> soy seed without going through that SPC soy protein concentrate or soy protein isolate as I mentioned earlier. We have not gone through this route because these SPC or SPI are not available not manufactured in our country. So, what we have done we took this soy seed soaked with water soaked in water or you can say water soaked this water soaked soy seed after crushing we squeezed out the milk. This soy milk basically contains contains soy protein and some carbohydrates. carbohydrate part. We just filtered the soy milk to remove the carbohydrate part partly not fully and this aqueous soy protein this aqueous soy milk was used as the matrix resin. That soy milk soaked jute was used for making a rigid panels. We made these product products rigid panels from both oven and non oven jute fabric. Now, these rigid panels we have measured the strength properties say tensile strength, flexural strength modulus. We have evaluated the flammability, uh, fire, fire retardancy of this composite in terms of limiting oxygen index parameter. And we found this LOI value ranges from 30 to 40, which remain in the category of non flammable objects. So, they are having very good fire retardancy properties, they are strong, they are rigid and our purpose was to make fully biodegradable and a rigid green composite. We have measured the biodegradation evaluated the biodegradation characteristics of these composites. We have found that after 60 days of 60 days of soil burial in 
in compost condition the composites become brittle and fragmented. So, it shows very good degradation properties after 60 days uh, during 60 days of soil burial in compost condition in humid condition in wet condition. But when it remains in indoor application it is it remains it shows very strong uh, very high strength properties fire retardant all these things. So, we can say we have achieved both this biodegradable characteristic as well as the strength of these composites. So, we have focused this product as green composite green composite or, or biodegradable composite for use in railway coach interior wall covering. We have also developed one pot suckling pot this is fully biodegradable material suckling pot. The suckling pot we have tested we have uh, placed one plant with some earth in this suckling pot we found a very good growth of the plant in the suckling pot and when the suckling pot was placed in uh, the garden after digging the earth. So, that plant uh, growth was very excellent as well as after uh, around 40 days we found that the uh, suckling pot totally degraded. Advantage is, advantage is that that um, pot material was degraded converted to some biomass and that acted as nutrient for the plant itself as manure. So, this way we developed uh, rigid composites from uh, this jute fiber and uh, soya milk resin. Now, the problem this uh, composite has got one problem that is the moisture absorption. If this if we continue if we are to provide uh, if we are to obtain this biodegradability the product should be uh, hydrophilic. This hydrophilicity is one of the required criteria for um, biodegradation but it will be it will not be resistant to moisture. So, in order to have a compromise we have also developed composite by mixing soy resin with some hydrophobic resins hydrophobic resin hydrophobic resin in certain proportion so that we could achieve the moisture resistance up to moisture absorption up to 8 to 10 percent moisture absorption and <coughs> tensile strength of that composite ranging between 45 to 55 mega Pascal. Also we have developed <coughs> that green composite from jute fiber and soy resin along with some nano filler. We have taken organically modified nano filler say 
Montmorillonite clay colloidite 30 B nanofiller with this combination and we achieved we achieved very good strength properties and that provided us tensile strength of 65 to 70 mega Pascal. We have compared the properties of this nano uh, filler jute fiber reinforced green composite as well as for that biodegradable jute composite without using any nano filler. We have compared the properties of these composites with the commercial laminates or composites available in the market. We procured from the market and we um, evaluated the tensile I mean say mechanical properties the specific gravity um, their um, mechanical properties say we have compared tensile strength modulus flexural strength all these things specific gravity their fire retardants all those things we have found that our composites our green composites are uh, in almost all cases the strengths of our jute reinforced green composites uh, using this soya matrix resin uh, they are having superior or better uh, mechanical properties than those of the commercial laminates and composites. So, it shows that green composites made from uh, this uh, jute fiber and uh, soy resin would be uh, good uh, replacement of uh, other fibers and synthetic matrix resins. Now, there is other natural fibers say rami. Rami is a stronger fiber, stronger natural fiber than jute or shishal or other natural fibers. So, if this fiber can be used as uh, 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 reinforcement for making composites with say phenolic resin. Penalty resin or epoxy resin, so these combinations can give again high performance. composites. Now, there is another possibility of forming uh, nano composites using natural fibers without using any other nano filler. I mean to say that the jute fiber itself, jute or rami fiber itself 
can be converted to nanofiber. One of the good technique is the converting this jute or rami to nano jute or nano rami would be through steam explosion. What is this? Now, in an autoclave, if, you, if these fibers, jute or rami fibers, are taken in an autoclave, immersed in water, then by heating, if that water is converted to high pressure steam what will happen that water molecules which has gone inside the inter side inter fibrillar region of the fibers that will also um, the, uh, water molecules are there in the uh, interfibular region. Now, that will remain under high steam pressure. Now, if there is some provision of sudden release of sudden release of pressure uh, should be done. If uh, suddenly this pressure is released, water molecules inside the interfibular region of the fibers that will be trying to come out from high pressure to low pressure. So, that will burst the uh, fibers to um, fibers to fibrils to cellulose. molecules increasing the surface area of the fiber. Such increased surface area of the fiber through steam explosion can lead to provide high interface uh, for matrix resin addition and that would be the future of such strong green composites using jute fiber or rami fiber with epoxy resin or uh, some biodegradable resin or some uh, uh, phenol formulated resin. Let us stop here. Thank you.